Normally in Elden Ring, even at the lowest possible level, you get a ton of stats in HP, FP, and stamina. So naturally, I wanted to find out if I could beat every boss in the Elden Ring DLC at the lowest possible theoretical limit. So I went ahead and modded my game and turned my HP, FP, and stamina to 1. This means I die in one hit, I cannot cast any spells or weapon skills, and most importantly, I can only perform one action before I have to regen my stamina. With a normal stamina bar, when you perform any action, it consumes some amount of stamina, and to demonstrate how that would look with one stamina, every time I attack, my stamina goes into a negative value, and then it has to regen back to one stamina before I can perform another action again. This run required a lot of patience and in-game tech to overcome the most impossible of hurdles with bosses, so I really hope you enjoy the video and make sure to subscribe. I spawn right at the start of the DLC, and as usual, go around collecting the available Skadu fragments on the map, and while I was on Torin, the one stamina for the most part wasn't an issue until I realized that I couldn't double jump when I was near enemies because of the stamina consumption under aggro. Also, while I was in legacy dungeons running the bosses, I realized I couldn't sprint past enemies, so even these kind of trivial things were a real hurdle, so I had to get some really important items to mitigate the stamina issue to some extent. First, I grabbed the two-headed turtle talisman in Elk River, which greatly boosts stamina regeneration, and for this run, whenever my stamina goes into the negative after performing an action, it would help a lot with regenerating back to one. Next, I get the most important physic tier for this run, the Viridian Hidden Tier, which disables stamina consumption for 15 seconds. But to get to the golem who drops that tier, first I had to take care of Ancient Dragon Man. Quickly after entering this fight, I learned a few things that defined this entire run. First, that I couldn't roll after attacking, which significantly reduced my punish windows because I had to make sure that I could regen stamina to roll the next attack. Next, that I obviously couldn't chain attacks no matter how long of a punish window I get. And most importantly, that I cannot spam roll twice in a row, and I knew this one penalty was going to make some of the bosses almost impossible to beat. But Ancient Dragon Man is quite a simple boss, so I stick with a steady approach of attacking and walking back immediately, and I take him down without a lot of trouble. And with that, I get access to Karo's Hidden Grave and run towards the Golem that drops a Viridian Hidden Tear. Thankfully, I didn't have to fight this guy and just stood atop the cliff and threw two hefty furnace pots into his face which was enough to take him down as well. After acquiring the tier, I make my way to our first major boss, the Scottatry Avatar, because he is pretty low HP so I can take care of him early. Since I only have one FP, I can't cast a single buff or weapon art, but thankfully there is another physic tier, the Cerulean Hidden Tier, which disables FP consumption for 10 seconds. This allows me to cast a few buffs once right at the start of the fight. After buffing, I trigger the boss, ready to kill him in two hits, but unfortunately, I get the instant headbutt, which of course, I can't roll because of negative stamina. But thankfully, the damage was great, so I just had to get better RNG and not get that attack. On the next attempt, I learned that along with not being able to roll twice in a row, not being able to sprint at all was going to be the biggest problem for this run. When the avatar does a huge thorns AoE and then shoots a bunch of projectiles, I could neither sprint to avoid it nor roll so many times in a row. After a few attempts, I managed to get lucky and kill the first phase before he gives me the projectile attacks, but now it was time for even more trouble. In phase 2, once the boss is done doing his scripted rush move, he gets some new attacks that spawns thorns that forces you to roll twice in a row. So as you can tell, yay, now I have to farm more good RNG and kill the boss before he does those attacks. To make it easier, I used the Flaming Strike Ash of War for more fire damage because this boss is extremely weak to it. And just like the first phase, after a lot of failed attempts to those attacks, I managed to get an attempt where I killed the second phase before he gets a chance to do them. And now for the third phase, there was one question remaining. Would I be able to dodge the triple needle attack he does at low HP? I actually can't dodge the fucking third, man. Oh my god. <laughs> so again, I just had to kill the third phase too before he could do the triple needles, and to make that even easier, I get the turtle shield to boost stamina regen, which helped me with being able to do charge attacks more often whenever he would lower his head down. 
Put on G, maybe? Let's go! After the Scotter Tree Avatar, I go to the Shadow Keep to pick up a parry dagger, the Mine Gooch, before heading to our next boss, Rolana. If you've fought Rolana, you probably know that she has insanely long combos that force you to roll not once or twice, but even four times in a row. So for a boss like this, there was only one answer, parrying. Successfully parrying an attack completely stops the combo, and with Rolana, if you parry her twice, it opens her up for a repose for massive damage. But parrying isn't necessarily an instant win button. I gotta avoid mistakes because I only have 1 HP and there's no room for failed parries. It only took me a whole hour to perfect those parries and managed to get this attempt. Four. I think my crack blade's gone here, though. So she's also gonna kill me, isn't she? Get fucked, bitch. Told you, six parries, and then she's dead. After Rolana, I decide to head towards the Putrescent Knight, but before I could get to him, I had to go through the Laser Worm Hell without being able to sprint. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to be able to sprint here, which means... Uh, yeah, I also can't jump. Uh, I got to go. Oh, come on! The bird! Okay, I gotta go. The bird here is a fucking issue. Um... Owned? Do not blow up. Jesus fucking Christ, we made it! Holy! After managing to get through that hell, we get to the Putrescent Knight, and this boss is extremely weak to holy damage, so I infuse my Star Fist with the Sacred Affinity. And of course, continuing the established theme throughout the run, I die to the very first attack, because I have zero stamina from attacking once. With the Putrescent Knight, the biggest worry was his horse attack, where he jumps up from his horse and then attacks three times along with his horse charging into you. I had doubts if I could dodge this attack without being able to roll twice, and I immediately get confirmation that I couldn't. Thankfully, all the other combos he does can be managed using strafes, and I just had to avoid getting that one horse attack. Once we reach phase two, there was a new problem to take care of. His face transition move, where he spreads magic waves around him, unfortunately, you just couldn't regen enough stamina to jump the final wave because it comes out so fast. Next, I tried the Green Burst Crystal tier for even more stamina regen, and it made no difference. Oh, dude, I can't. Oh, that's actually insane. Even with the, the stamina regen tier, it doesn't regen fast enough for me to do a double jump. 
Then, I decide to go and get the backstep iframe talisman from Raw Ruins, the fine crucible feather talisman, and compared to rolling, backsteps are just a tiny bit faster to recover from and regen stamina. So next, I try to dodge the transition attack using backsteps, and even that doesn't work. After running out of all options, I realized that I could just use the Viridian Hidden Tier before this attack, so I could easily jump as many times as I want to for 15 seconds. Ah! Holy! We live! Okay, don't fuck me. Oh, I hate that attack. Okay. Okay, good attack. Two more. Good attack. What? I can't see! I won't greet. I won't greet. Baroness! Let's go! How it is, man. It's, it's that easy. It's that fucking easy. Okay, I've got, I got really lucky he didn't do the transition attack again. Next, we move on to the Dancing Lion. Spacing and distance management is critical with this fight. The Lion has some really fast follow-up attacks with his head, which I obviously can't dodge because of the one stamina, so for most of his phase 1 attacks, I either have to outspace the follow-ups right after rolling, or outspace the first attack and then roll the second attack, but this leaves very few opportunities for punishes as I can only really punish when I can get under him or when I can get behind him. As for his breath attack, you can just strafe that by walking sideways without even sprinting. This is all good, but what about that phase 2? How do I deal with all the lightning and frost after effects in phase 2 if I can't roll twice in a row? Well, the solution was yet again the Viridian Hidden Tier. My idea was to use a Physic right as he goes into phase 2 and try to brute force my way to a stagger and kill him right there. But putting that into practice wasn't as simple as it was in my head. Oh, dude, it's so off. Oh. Ah! Fucking bleed proc. <laughs> oh shit, man. This run is so stupid. After I head to Romina. Romina is extremely weak to fire damage, so I put on the fire affinity on my Starfist. Stamina was once again an issue here. I try some jumping attacks, but she would catch me with her weapon follow-up instantly. I then learned that the attacks I normally strafe by running towards her, I can't anymore, because I can't sprint. Okay. So I can't sprint, which is another problem. Another problem was her leaping double swipe, since rolling both the swipes was impossible here. But eventually, I figure out if you roll along with her attack and walk towards her, you can duck under the second swipe. Phase 1 was solved by just playing passively and knowing how to dodge the double swipe, but moving on to Phase 2, not being able to sprint made it impossible to dodge her transition attack from close range. The only solution to this problem was pure luck. I just have to pray that I'm not next to her when she transitions, and that was the only way to make it out of the Butterfly Rod AoE. Since she can choose to do that attack anytime in Phase 2, I just have to keep hoping she'll be nice to me. Oh my gosh, she's being so nice to me.
Yes, let's go! Let's go! Time to throw. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a new, I'm a changed individual. No more throws. And then we move on to Commander Gaius. With Commander Gaius, the very first issue is obviously his charge attack, but thankfully there's a good way to approach this fight where you can make him run into a wall. Even though Gaius seems like he has a really frantic moveset, his attacks are extremely slow compared to the other bosses, and I could easily roll all of his combos, except for this one attack where he goes berserk and attacks 17 times in a row. Uh, Alright. Dude, that, that combo is the run killer, man. I can't do sh shit against that. Yeah, the wobble combo is just like trouble. Eventually, I figure out that if you roll to his left side and then straight counterclockwise, you can avoid the entire combo and even regen enough stamina to get a charge attack punish. I can straight that. Okay. Oh, guys, is free. Okay, I can kill him next attempt. Stagger? Insane? Oh my god, guys, is just fucking dead? Guys, is literally dead? Guys, is actually dead? I'm just a god of the video game? After Gaius, I head to the Lord of Frenzied Flame, Midra. With Midra, I was a little concerned with his opening attacks since I couldn't sprint, but surprisingly you can dodge it if you walk towards him and roll into him just at the last moment. Just like Rolana, Midra also has really fast combos, so I just had to parry him. At first, I wondered if he was even parryable because I kept failing miserably, but thankfully, turns out a majority of his attacks are indeed possible to parry. But to open him up for a repose, you do require three parries as compared to two for Rolana. Oh my god. He's a triple? Oh dude, this is so bad. He's a fucking triple? Dude, am I? I'm a god! Holy shit, I'm so good! Mitra turned out to be really easy to parry, even for my first time, and we reached phase 2 soon, but of course, I can't sprint away from his huge phase transition, so that was still a really tight attack to outspace, but thankfully not impossible if you manage to make him lose tracking by circling under him. I can punish this. Oh, he's being so nice to me. One more. I don't think I can kill him. I think I got to do... Oh, I might have been able to kill... Oh, let's go! <laughs> I thought I'd have to do one more cycle. And at last, it was time for Bale. With Bale, as is usually the tradition, I give Egon one good chance to take his revenge. Okay, okay. I hereby vow you will rule this day. Okay, that's problematic. Okay, now time for some serious attempts without Egon, because he would have just trivialized his boss. With Bale, his fire breath was just instant death, and it would usually come right at the start. And since I can't sprint, 90% of the attempts just ended right as they started. The fire not only tracks, but can also ricochet off of the wall, so there really wasn't a way to consistently dodge it. Once I manage to get close to him, I decide to use the Sword Lance with the Dragon Communion Grease because Bale is extremely weak to pierce damage, and as tanky as he is, we really need all the damage we could get to make this somewhat less impossible than it seemed. Bale's melee attacks at close range are still fine since they aren't that fast, but the problem was again him jumping away and doing the fire breath but through some miracle, I managed to survive it this time. I also heavily utilized backstep dodges in this fight to dodge his grabs or his headbutts and recover just a little bit faster to be able to dodge his follow-ups. 
Thanks to my great damage, we reached phase two quickly, but I learned here that you really don't want to phase transition him by staying close, or you can't outspace the explosion from his transition. Once I'm done with a decent attempt, I probably have to die at least 17 more times to the fire breath before I get a chance at phase two again. This time, I make sure to stand away from him when he transitions to outspace the explosion. With phase two, I was concerned if you could dodge the fireballs without sprinting, but apparently you just walk sideways and every single fireball goes right past you. This also lets you conserve stamina to dodge his actual landing. The fight still didn't seem impossible here. I just had to pray that I somehow avoid the fire breath and luckily I did manage to do it on this attempt. This was looking great so far until this happened. No! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> ah, fuck. Ah, the fucking laser man. Unfortunately, the laser in phase two was yet another attack that seemed impossible to dodge. The second part of the laser requires you to roll twice in a row, and even trying to dodge it with back steps, it seemed impossible. I even tried back stepping, then rolling, and still had zero success. So again, yet another attack I had to just pray that it doesn't happen and brute force my way to a quick stagger in phase two and after hours of attempts, I managed to achieve this. Oh shit! It's happening! It's happening! No, I took the repulse! No! It's okay. Surely. Oh, dude. <laughs> what? Dude, I rolled, man. I rolled. I rolled. I rolled. I rolled. Dude, how is that not a, a proper roll? That one mistake of taking the repose too early was going to cost me over four more hours because of all the fire breaths and the lasers until I reached this attempt where something even crazier happened. Oh my fucking god! There it listen, it's simple, man. I told you it's that easy. Hold on, hold on for the YouTube. First try! Let's go! It's that simple, man. It's that simple, you know? <laughs> After achieving the impossible, I move on to Mateer. Seeing how Bail took me nearly eight hours, I knew Matir's second phase was also going to be just as painful because of her own giant lasers that can't be dodged without sprinting. So I decided to upgrade my Skadu level to the max and cast every single buff I could and just hope that I could kill the boss before she even reaches phase two. See how much I do. Wait, is he just dead? If I... Maybe? Hold on, I'm gonna risk it. Easy fucking game. There it is! There it is! I mean, it's just simple. It's, it's just simple geometry. Thankfully, my plan worked out with Mateer, but then it was time for Mesmer. The first thing I noticed with Mesmer is that you can't roll away from his opening attack because you can't roll the follow-up explosion fast enough. All right, that was great. Um, the fix was simple. I just had to backstep dodge both the landing and the explosion. Next, we move on to his double swipe. 
This attack is just fast enough that the only way to dodge it is to roll twice. But I wondered, what if I could just parry it and stop the combo? But no matter how much I tried, it seemed like this attack was just not parryable. I even tried golden parry, but it made no difference. Next, I tried light rolling away, and that still wasn't enough to outspace the second swipe. I tried jumping both swipes, and that didn't even work for the first one. I tried backstep dodging, but even that wasn't fast enough to be able to dodge the follow-up. After an hour of experiments with this attack, the only solution was to just play the entire fight mid-range so the first attack doesn't reach you. Now, we just needed to put this new knowledge to the test. Playing at mid-range, I even figure out some new strafes for his other attacks. If I outspace his stab attack at mid-range, I could strafe his follow-up stab through a big punish window. And if I outspace his slow spin attack, I could strafe the dragging follow-up by doing a charge attack to lower my hitbox. Next, I wanted to see if I could strafe his huge weapon art combo and duck under his multi-stabs so I could get more punish windows without having to reach in stamina. But I didn't have much luck there, and in the end, I just resorted to rolling the whole combo. And as for the grab attack, I could actually just jump over it and get another free punish. Oh my god, dude, I got so lucky with the charge art too. <laughs> he didn't fucking hit me with the poke. For the phase two opening attack, I dodged it the same way as phase one by backstepping twice. In this phase, if you hit the snake at a specific timing, you can actually get double the damage by hitting Mesmer's hitbox as well. With the three at snake combo, I tried backstep dodges again, and that worked well for the first two because I could reach in stamina faster, but it worked against me for the third one because it has a huge lingering hitbox, and backsteps don't put you far enough away. But the nightmare attack in phase two was this huge multi-hit snake attack where he summons a pool of blood around him. If you're anywhere close to Mesmer, you cannot outspace the AoE without being able to sprint. And if you do manage to dodge the AoE, you have to dodge five different snake hits and Mesmer right at the end. Dude, I got, what is this? I got stuck on his fucking curtain, man. After nearly four hours into the fight, I managed to get to phase two again. No! Just like Bale, that one little mistake cost me another two hours to get that close again. It's not worth it, man. It's not fucking worth it. After beating Mesmer, I burned the ceiling tree and gained access to Anir Elim. This area with one stamina was quite an ordeal. First, I had to figure out a way to make it past this line warrior and then these spiral spammers on the stairs. Thankfully, there was an easy solution for this. If you use a stealth item like Unseen Form or Lamenting Visage, you become almost invisible to enemies. This way, I could distract the line with a cookery and then run past all the enemies without being noticed. Next, it was time for one last hurdle before the final boss, Lita and Dane. You'd be wondering how I deal with two NPCs at once who have infinite stamina against me who only has one stamina. And the answer was simple, stealth. 
Just like with the enemies before, if you use a stealth item inside the arena, you can actually sit inside without aggroing the NPCs, as long as you keep throwing something at the wall to distract them. To deal damage without aggroing, I just had to throw some rod pots and wait in my safe spot until they wither away. After a few minutes, the rod took out Dane, but unfortunately, Lita still stood strong because it turns out she's immune to rod. So well, now we gotta fight her head on. Although fighting one NPC is a lot easier, she's still not as simple as Ancient Dragon Man and could easily hyper armor at any moment and instantly do a follow up. So I had to play this fight in the most passive way by only punishing after she does the jump attack. Since I can't sprint, that's the only attack where I can safely punish and then walk back to maintain a safe distance. After 10 whole minutes of this, Lita was down. Finally, it was time for Promised Consort Radon. Consort Radon is not only the most aggressive boss in the game, but also has the fastest attacks by a long shot, so the only plausible approach to this fight was parrying. So I went with the most optimized parry build with the Misery Core Dagger, which has the highest crit damage and the Blade of Mercy Talisman. After three parries, it opens him up for a repose, and after seeing how much damage one single repose did, I started feeling confident this wasn't gonna be that bad. Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. What the fuck? You piece of shit. Phase one of Consort is so simple that you might not even count it as part of the fight. Most of his attacks are parryable, and he doesn't have any attacks so far that require sprinting or rolling twice in a row, so we get done with the first phase after just two reposts. And as the real fight begins, I was already losing all hope because I couldn't sprint for the Light of Mikola attack, but shockingly, it's somehow possible to make it out alive by just walking if you can time the roll at the last moment. Okay, but what do you do about all of these other attacks that you can neither parry nor roll enough times at once? Well, you die. So whenever he did any of his clone attacks, I died. And the most miserable out of all these attacks was the Rock Sling into 5 clones attack. It's one of his most common attacks in Phase 2, so whenever he did that attack, it was like hitting an instant fail button, and we had to start all over again. Rip me, man. Dude, every fucking time, holy. And you might be wondering how I dodge the meter strike he does at low HP if I can't sprint away. But out of all the messed up attacks in this fight, that one attack is actually not impossible to dodge, and there is a way to deal with it as long as you know where he's coming from in the sky. So I died, and died, and died for nearly 20 hours until this happened. I can't. I fucking can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm fucking done. <sighs> Hope you guys enjoyed this crazy run and feel free to check out some of my other runs here. God, dude. Guys, listen, kids. If you're watching, stay in school. Okay? It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. If there's one thing I can tell you to do, do not, do not go down this path.